Hi, Joe Ramsey here, and um, last week I had an interesting debate, or I saw an interesting debate on Facebook about whether young adult fiction should include things like sex and drinking and drugs and swearing. That type of debate comes up a lot, um, and the person on the no it definitely shouldn't side was saying that as an adult, he wishes he could go back to the simple times of childhood and he wants his teenage children to live in the simple times of childhood as long as possible. And that's why he doesn't think that any young adult fiction whatsoever should ever include sex, drinking, drugs, smoking, anything like that that he considers adult behaviors. Um, live your life the way you want to, raise your kids the way you want to, but there are teenagers out there who are smoking and drinking and doing drugs and having sex and, you know, living on their own, supporting themselves, raising their own children. And as a young adult author and as a parent and as a former high school teacher, I think that authors aren't doing readers any favors by pretending those things don't happen. I don't think parents and teachers and librarians are doing teens any favors by pretending those things don't happen either, to be honest. Because the thing is, we if we want teenagers to read books, if we want people in general to read books, we want to present something authentic. Having a 16-year-old character who acts like a 10-year-old and does 10-year-old type of activities might not be so authentic unless there's a justifiable reason given for that particular character. At the same time, teenagers are, you know, you guys have brains. I've worked with teenagers. And I know that sounds like I'm being, trying to be the cool adult who knows what I'm talking about, so sorry. But you guys have brains. A teenager can pick up a dictionary and look up a word and figure out how to use it. Or they can, or hear it on TV or see it in a book. And so I've had comments from editors saying, this, this word is too big for a teenager to use, or this phrasing is too sophisticated, teenagers don't think that way. And um, I, I was polite about it, but my basic response was, do you know any teenagers? Have you ever spoken to a teenager? Ironically, one of the, comment, one of the uh, lines in, uh, in one of my books that the editor said, a teenager wouldn't think this way, this is too sophisticated. The character was 16. My daughter said the exact same thing to me when she was 13. But the editor was convinced that it was too sophisticated for a 16 year old to think of. Um, and I'm not slamming the editor by any means. Editors are great people. I would not be where I am without you guys. I'm, I'm just saying some adults don't really have an accurate view of teenagers. They have a very small sampling to go by or they're going by memories of how they themselves were, which might not have been how everybody was, or they've just forgotten what it's like and you know, think teenagers are small children with teen after their age. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, a, as a reader, read what you want to read. If you are a teenager and you've got stuff going on in your life that maybe the adults don't know about or maybe you're proud of or maybe you're not, there's going to be a book somewhere about a character who's going through exactly the same thing you're going through. And that's my point. Because if we, if we listen to the people who say, oh no, you shouldn't present that stuff in young adult fiction because it will encourage teenagers to do it, 
that's discounting the fact that a lot of teenagers already are and might want to read books about people like them to show themselves that they're not weird, they're okay. They're not going to get judged. Or maybe they are, but if they do, it's okay because there are other people like them out there. So, you know, I write the books I write. If you've read any of my books, you'll notice that the characters generally don't have sex. They don't drink, they don't smoke, they swear. Um, <laughs> But that's my preference as an author. That's not me saying teenagers don't do it. And I do have sexually active characters. They just don't have sex in the course of the story because the story doesn't call for it. If the story called for it, then that would be what would happen regardless of whether I thought it should or not because I have to be true to the story and the characters. My characters don't drink or smoke or do drugs because that wasn't because I do sometimes fall into the trap of remembering my own teenage self and those were not part of my high school experience. So sometimes I, I do forget <laughs> that um, that kind of thing happens. But on the other hand, my characters are usually the type who wouldn't be out partying anyway. So it, it is being authentic to the characters. Um, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a place for those things in fiction, it doesn't mean that there won't necessarily be a place for them in my books at some point. There just hasn't been to this point. So, you know, as authors, it's our job to present intriguing characters, gripping plots, and to present a version of reality somehow. Even in a fantasy novel, science fiction, whatever, there's still room for reality in how the characters interact, what the characters do, how they think. And that's what we need to do. Saying that, you know, teenagers shouldn't read, quote unquote, that stuff in books, it, that, that's not reality, any more than it's reality to say that teenagers don't do those things. So, like I said at the beginning, read what you want, do what you want, well, don't do anything you want, but I mean, live your life, don't hurt other people, but live your life, if you're a parent, raise your kids the way that you believe they should be raised, be good to them, but don't tell other people that their experiences are not valid and don't tell authors that they can't present other people's valid experiences because you don't agree with them. And this is Joe Ramsey signing off because I desperately need more caffeine. Um, have a great week and I'll see you next Monday.